Hi, I'm Dr. Keith Forth, and I'm going to talk about ear tubes today. One of the things we see quite often is that mostly children, but some adults, have trouble with their eustachian tube. And most of the time we see that it doesn't allow fluid that's accumulated in the middle ear from infection to properly drain. Normally, the fluid would drain down and out the eustachian tube and into the back of the nose. But what happens when this isn't occurring normally? Well, one of the ways we can deal with this, especially if medicine fails to deal with it, one of the ways we can deal with it is by placement of an ear tube, which we sometimes call ventilation tubes. So here's a picture of an ear tube as we're looking straight at it, and here it is on profile. And what an ear tube allows us to do is bypass the eustachian tube. So instead of fluid draining down and out of the eustachian tube and into the back of the nose, if we put a tube into this eardrum, then now we have allowed a pathway by which the fluid can drain out of the ear. And once you get fluid out of the middle ear, this middle ear space is much more resistant to infection. And so if you take an example of a kid who gets six or more ear infections a year, you put tubes in and typically that child would probably see somewhere on the order of zero to maybe one or two ear infections per year because we got rid of all that fluid that was stuck in the middle ear space. The tube has a second purpose. So the first purpose may be to drain fluid out, but it also allows for air to get into the middle ear through the middle of this tube. So the tube has two functions, and those two functions are to replace the two functions of the eustachian tube. It allows air to get in and allows fluid to get out. So here's a representation of an ear tube and the eardrum itself is what holds it in place. Over time, the outer layer of the eardrum will accumulate dead skin cells underneath this flange. And as those cells accumulate behind this flange, it drives the ear tube out of the ear, and then eventually the ear tube ends up falling into the ear canal, where most of the time it'll drift out harmlessly along with some wax. The inner lining of the eardrum doesn't shed skin cells like this. And so nothing accumulates back here, and that's why almost always the tube is forced out of the eardrum over time. For most kids, this process takes 12 to 18 months. Some spit them out much quicker, some much slower. In fact, there are some who don't want to spit them out at all. This process doesn't happen at all, and when they're done with their ear problems, we might have to go in and get them out. But for most kids, it's about 12 months that they stay in, they come out on their own, and most of the time, within 24 or 48 hours of that tube coming out, that eardrum heals itself, and we get an intact eardrum again. If a child hasn't outgrown the need for tubes, in other words, if they haven't achieved a working eustachian tube, then we might have to put an ear tube back into that ear and give them some more time to grow. Finally, there's some adults whose eustachian tubes just flat out don't work. And we can put a tube into the ear to bypass the function of the eustachian tube. And when those tubes come out and that eardrum heals back up, generally we'll need to put them back in if this eustachian tube is not working. Hope this was educational and thank you for listening.